Okay. Well, welcome. We're doing a series on vaccines, and I have Dr. Rachel Davis Rankin with us today. Hi, Dr. Rankin. Hi, good morning or afternoon. So, um, Dr. Rankin, do you mind um, letting our viewers know what kind of doctor you are and where you work just to kind of understand uh, what you do? Sure. So, I am both a family medicine doctor and a hospice and palliative medicine doctor. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I work for the University of New Mexico Hospital as an inpatient palliative medicine doctor. And then I work in a clinic doing outpatient palliative medicine, and I also do hospice work. Great, thank you. So um, uh, Dr. Ingham's gonna have a lot of information for us here about her experience uh, with patients in the hospital. Um, but let's start with, you. Um, are you uh, vaccinated? I am. Okay. And how about you have two daughters, right? Mm -hmm. And Are your daughters vaccinated? They are. They are. Can you tell us a little bit about that decision to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my husband and I are both physicians and we actually had an opportunity to enroll them both in the clinical trials for the Moderna vaccine. And we felt strongly enough about the importance of this vaccine and its availability that we signed both of them up for the trial. Our younger daughter, who is just now turned six, but was five at the time, got in immediately last spring and was the first five-year-old in New Mexico to get vaccinated, which we celebrated in our family. And um, there she is. <laughs> and then our older daughter was also in the trial a little bit later, ended up getting placebo and is now fully vaccinated after finding that out. And you have probably seen quite a bit um, around efficacy of vaccines being in working in the hospital. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, we've seen pretty clearly about efficacy that it um, the vaccines, both the Pfizer, the Moderna, and I think to some extent the Johnson & Johnson work really well to protect not only from the virus, but specifically from hospitalization and death. And so I know across the country, we're seeing a lot of breakthrough infections for vaccinated individuals, but we're not seeing a lot of those patients get hospitalized or die. And so right now in our hospital, we're way over full. We're at about 160% capacity and our ICU is full, full, full all of our COVID patients, like 95 to 100% of them uh, are unvaccinated. And um, do you see, I, I know you had an episode on Friday um, where someone unvaccinated kind of wished they had been vaccinated. Do you mind sharing part of that story with, with the viewers? Yeah, I... It's so hard because we care for our patients in, in those hospital beds no matter what, um, but certainly we feel sad uh, that it didn't have to happen. And I had a really young man on Friday um, on the brink of being intubated, pull down his oxygen mask and just basically beg me, can I please get that, that injection now? And I asked him, do you mean the vaccine? And he said, yeah. And, you know, I had to say, I'm so sorry. We can't give it to you right now. It's too late. Um, there are stories of this everywhere. It hadn't happened to me personally until Friday. Um, but I've definitely heard colleagues share similar stories. I really, really, really would encourage anybody who isn't vaccinated to think about that and think about, you know, your loved ones and the fact that we really do know that vaccine protects from hospitalization and death because I, it's so hard to be in that position to have to say no to somebody who's so critically ill. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know some people have a lot of concerns about side effects of the vaccine. Have you seen any, have you in your experience in the hospital seen anyone admitted or any issues with side effects of vaccines? Not in the hospital. I have not seen any side effects that have needed hospitalization. And did you personally have any side effects or your children? Um, so I've had both vaccines and a booster. And I would say the second one, I didn't feel great the next day. 
Um, but it was pretty miraculous how it lasted 10 to 12 hours and it was gone. I was worried for the booster because uh, I thought it would happen again and I felt fine, like a little foggy headed, but totally fine. And the girls were fine, no fevers, nothing, went to bed, did fine. You know, they're so resilient, but no, it was pretty benign altogether. Yeah. And do you know of anyone personally who's had any significant issues or side effects or anything that would make you at all concerned about the safety or efficacy? No, everybody I know who's gotten it has had some sore arm, you know, headache, maybe felt a little bit ill after one of the three of them, but nobody has anything more serious than that including all the children. Mm -hmm. And so right now you mentioned that your hospital's at 160% capacity. So that has to be somewhat overwhelming on staff. Is that right? How, how, are, how are you holding up? How your husband is positioned as well? How is he holding up? Um, you know, we all joke around when we say, hey, how are you doing? And everybody sort of says, fine, because there's really not another alternative we're really thankful to be healthy and able to keep caring for patients. But I would say that everybody in the hospital system is, we call it crispy. Um, you know, I ran into a colleague of mine in the ICU this week who was on day 15 of 21 straight. It's not uncommon for our hospitalists and our ICU doctors to be working up to 30 days straight because we have so many patients and not enough staff. So we are exhausted. We are sad and overwhelmed at what's going on right now. Um, but we are still showing up for work every single day. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much for what you're doing. Is there any, anything you would say to, I know um, you've worked outpatient family medicine before, but currently you do mostly inpatient. Is that right? Yeah, I do inpatient and then some outpatient hospice and a little bit of other outpatient. I've had a lot of conversations with people about getting vaccinated. I have heard a lot of why people don't. And I think it's always important to think about what you put in your body. But I would really, really encourage every person who hasn't been vaccinated to think really hard about what we're seeing about our community and about the fact that this is going to continue if not enough people get vaccinated. Um, and also that the risk of mortality of death is so much higher for people who haven't been vaccinated. So it's not that our reasons aren't valid and that the fear isn't real, um, but it's a really important, really brave thing to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Is there anything else you want to add? Anything you want to make sure people know in closing about um, COVID or about the vaccine or about your experience? Um, thank you for listening to Dr. Carpenter talk about this. Um, she is a very trusted colleague and I think that we in the medical community uh, are really trying to understand why people have made the choices that they've made, but I hope that you'll hear these words and make sure that the ways in which you inform yourself are from good sources and know that we so much want to take care of everybody and see everybody safe. And um, the way to do that is to get vaccinated. Thank you, Dr. Rankin. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for all of the hard work that you and your husband are doing in the hospitals. Of course.